other than Sheehan and, and the call-ups, is there anybody else missing no. for Saturday? No, no. The rest are, are ready to go. Okay. Um, and are y'all going to call up any players from the twos? Yes. One. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I have to say it now or uh, it's good to go, but uh, yeah, maybe you will get to know. But yeah, one player is going to come with us. Okay. Um, when you're missing so many players, uh, do you prefer kind of a plug-and-play approach or do you prefer kind of adjusting things to better suit the talent that you have no, remaining? No, for me, it's just we've been, we've been working this year a lot in us, a lot, a lot on us. Like regardless of who we play, we are trying to play exactly the same way. And um, so it would be unfair for me. We've been training for, what, two, three months now. And then suddenly I changed the, the system just because we have a couple absences. So I'm going to just put the players that has been training in the, in the same system and we'll go from there. What do you expect from Rios? I expect uh, him bringing some energy, uh, some professionalism. Uh, I, I have heard a lot of good things about him uh, on a personal side. And then, of course, he will continue competing for a spot as, as everyone else. And when he's on the field, I expect scoring some goals. Toronto have um, seven points three or four matches. Um, what is their mentality under Herdman versus what it was in past years under Bob Bradley from what you've seen in the video? Uh, well, it's a different team. They're, they're playing in a different system. Um, I can see their two DPs are fully engaged and fully committed to, to their teams. So I think that's pretty good, pretty awesome to see them, uh, how committed they are. And uh, yeah, we'll have to, to take some considerations on those two because they are very good players. But uh, again, we're playing our own game. Uh, big emphasis for us is having more points when we play on the road. And uh, we will continue with that objective. So yeah, uh, it's going to be a very good match. Looking back at Orlando, um, and then just as far as it pertains to the old skills for this year, um, the team was able to really hold firm and hold that lead under a lot of the rest. How does that mindset kind of carry on into later in the season, especially on the road where you have mentioned so many times at this point, this team has to gather points on the road where it didn't do it in the past years. But how do you take that mindset from home and apply it to the road? Because it seems easier said than done at a lot of times. Yes, yes. No, I, I love the question because it's a big part of our system. We take this, you know, approach from Ben Frickley, our, our, our psychologist of uh, start to stop continue, right? And it's every time when you do evaluations, when you do after the match, what we need to continue doing, start doing and, and stop doing, right? And for me, we need to continue with this sol um, solid block that we have defensively. I think the, the defenders look just sharp in defending and defending the box and they, they look like, uh, you know, they can hold a 1-0 a, a lead by, by a very good amount of minutes. I think that's good with, when you talk about the mentality of the team uh, playing on the road. I think that's very important that we are hard to break first. Uh, but at the same time, we need to, to start to play better, start to play better a little bit, especially when we play on the road. We need to have and, and give a lot of value to the possession sequences and 20, 30 passes sequences are good for us because that gives us freedom, give them confidence, and, and, and hopefully after doing that, we can finalize with a good chance. But for me, possession sequences are so important for us. And also something we've been very good is the transition moments. So of course, in those away games, at times, the opponent takes a bit more the leadership of the game, and then maybe in transition, you can hurt them as well. So it's part of what we've been working on a system where we want to be on the front foot, uh, having control of the game. But when that doesn't happen for whatever reason, we are very good in transition. So um, I, I think we're going to continue doing that. How's Stian doing? And do you have any update on him? Yeah, no, uh, no, no updates at all. Honestly, uh, we're waiting a little bit on the doctors and all the all the things that they have to do on him. Uh, but yeah, sad about uh, the notice, of course, I talked to him and yeah, of course, something we were not expecting and it was unfortunately in a very good moment for him. He was having a little bit of momentum with the team and having some, you know, confidence in his game and started to know uh, the players and the system. So it's, a, it's not the best time, but at the same time, you know, at the beginning of the season is not the worst thing, it's, it's better than later in the year. So yeah, we're going to try to uh, manage his injury as always, safety first, and as soon as he's healthy and, and his fitness levels are again to a good level, he'll be back. 
and I hope it's, 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 it, it happens soon. So looking at the next man up, Noah Cobb, how's he looked in training this week, and uh, what are, what's going to be key for him to step into Steon's shoes? I think just playing his his own game. He's been amazing. Uh, I mean, you guys remember a couple of the preseason games. He was a different level compared to last year. Completely different. So, uh, for me, when when you look at development of young players, you have to accept some of the uh, you know ups and downs in the in the career. I think this year Noah has been very stable and very mature. So for me, what I expect is is he gives me that what I've seen in preseason, what I see day in, day out in training session. Um, I just expect him to perform the same. Uh, I don't need him to com uh, to be compared to Stian because they are different, different characteristics. Uh, just playing kind of the same role that Stian does. The leadership is being very good from Noah. Noah is very vocal, which is something that I really like for center backs. So you just need to enjoy the, the game. The team last season without Almada struggled a lot. Um, now you're missing more than just Almada. How can the team go to Toronto with this depleted roster and get a result? I would say that any team in the league, you take one of the DPs out and it's not the same. Any team. So uh, it's not different uh, with us. Like, of course, uh, the, the, the weight that Almada and Gigi carries on the attack and the attention they get from, from the opponents. At times, even though someone else like Jamal has a great game, at times they don't carry the same, uh, you know, weight uh, on the opponent, and they don't, you know, take the same amount of attention, and, and that happens, right? But uh, for me, we're very happy with the development of, of some of the guys playing uh, in the same system. Uh, I think Jamal is, is did a great, great precision. Uh, uh, Nick Carmino did a great preseason. Tyler did a great preseason. I think, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, Edwin and Derek were a little bit injured, but, but they are good players that can impact the game. Dax has been amazing. I mean, we have players that have been great in this preseason and in training, so we have full confidence in them. How is Derek doing? He played a half of two yeah. on Sunday. How is he doing? Yeah, he's doing well. He's doing, honestly, he's been training very, very good, honestly. He always, always trains very hard. It's just now a lot of competition in that position, right? We, we almost have six wingers this year, and most of them are similar, fast, and dribblers, and can impact at any moment. Luke Brennan is another one that's been doing amazing in the training session. So, uh, again, there's competition there, but Derek is doing very, very good, and, and we'll see what he can bring to the team. In preseason, you mixed the lineups a lot, and players played with different guys. Was a little bit of that looking ahead to game four? international break knowing that it might be a mix and match squad? I'm a genius. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not at all. Not at all. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, not at all. We, we just try to, you know, put everyone in the system. For me, what's very important that us is, is regardless of who's on the field, we try to, we, you, you look at us and you say, that's Atlanta United, right? I have to check if one of those lineups is, is something very similar to this one. I have to check that. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I think, uh, I think that worked well in preseason. That brings the spirits of the team the same, the same ideas, the same concepts, the same principles. And, uh, and I think it's going to pay off a little bit uh, in this game. You know, we like this where... There is a different vibe, I think, on the field just with guys away. So you have different personalities, different voices. Is it kind of an opportunity and an exciting week for you and your staff and for the players to start fresh in a way? Yeah, maybe, maybe. I think uh, it's, it's, for me, it's, it's an exciting week where we, we can test the depth of the team. We can see them again, the emphasis of winning away and, and without some of the key players, of course. But the I, I'm I'm sure and certain about one thing. The players I put on Saturday, they're going to be ready to fight and they're going to be ready to compete. The result, who knows? But I know my team will be ready to fight to compete. All of those guys that I will put there, they are fighters. They've been grinding. They've been uh, competing very good in the training sessions. So I'm sure they're going to compete very good. Rios mentioned having to adapt quickly. How do you and the rest of the coaching staff help to ensure ensure that he has a smooth transition here to the club? Well, some, some conversations, of course, uh, at the same time, give him some time just to process his own, the, the own changes, right? His wife, here, family, uh, 
getting a new apartment, car, all, all these little things that, that, that you don't think about at times, but uh, you have to give him time and, and help him on that side, uh, help him to adapt, but at the same time, having conversations with him about our system and, and, and how how's our process more than anything, because we have good processes here. And for him to understand those processes and, and who's in charge of what in the coaching staff, how we can help him, I think that's very important. And hopefully he starts to get to know us a bit better and his adaptation is, is fast. So far, do you feel like it's been a smooth transition? Yes, also because he knows the league. He, he came here very young. Yesterday I was talking to him about his challenges when he was coming here, the second division. Uh, league and USL, how he earned his spot in Charlotte with, this, with the USL team. Then, then he went to the first team and stayed there for, for two years. Um, Nashville, I mean, you know, um, I think uh, he knows the league, knows the players, knows the bands. He knows what is Atlanta, so he's not completely a new guy that is, is here. He knows pretty much everything. Is more he knows us, knows Atlanta, knows the staff, knows the, the players. So. I think his integration is going well. Considering all the factors on Saturday, the weather, the starters y'all are missing, uh, will game management take on uh, a more important focus for the guys just to recognize situations if you have a lead or if you're chasing the game? Yes, yes, I think we, we don't. We don't practice that a lot, like, uh, okay, we are winning once year. I think we have done that in the past and some other years. I think this year we try to be consistent and we talk about that. Again, for the purposes, consistency, always trying to be the same regardless of the scoreline. But of course, adaptation is also another one. This is trying to adapt to the situations are presented. Are you a man up, a man down? Uh, is the field slow? Is the field fast? Is cold? Is the heat is, to, uh, you know, all these little factors that can change the game and how we can adapt on the field quickly. And that was part of the preseason idea, taking them to uncomfortable places, different weather, different grass, a lot of stuff. At times with heavy legs, we made them play just to, to you know, being tough mentally. So a couple of those and, and how we adapt to different situations. So game management is one of those where we're winning 1-0, What's our mentality? Are we protective and we want to defend that lead or we want to increase the lead? And depends on what is in front of us. The opponent is coming with a lot of numbers. Maybe it's better just to defend and be solid a little bit and then maybe hit them in counter. Or we feel we can be dominating the game and try to score the goal on the front foot. It depends on the situation, mm -hmm. right? But I think that by now the players know those factors and how they can communicate on the field to adjust. So I hope that that continues and, and that is now a strength of the team of how we manage the, the games. You've talked, oh, sorry. You've talked before about the pairings within the squad on the field. Uh, how have those pairings been developing in your point of view? And uh, are things going the way that you want them to go? Well, uh, talking about this lineup that is coming or the, the first Just three in lineups? General. In general, it's going well. I, I would say if I judge the, the last three lineups, I think the pairings and in general just repairing Repeating three consecutive lineups is good. I don't know if it's the first time I do that, but it's, it's one of those, or second, or something like that. So <laughs> for me, it's a positive. Uh, but now, um, with this maybe new lineup, I think it's going well, especially because in prison, in prison we did a lot of this and we start to mix all the defenders with different defenders, center backs, and center backs with different fullbacks, and center mids with different center mids, and the 10 and the 9 and the wing. So uh, I think that in that way, there are. There are not just one pair that is cohesive, not just one pair that is in tune. And then if you change one, then they don't know each other. No, we've been doing that in the training sessions. At times, I don't put the lineup until the day before the game. And, and they are training, training, training in the system. And it's more the roles rather than the pairs. But of course, as you continue with the games, you're going to start to know you know, Derek with Abram, Derek with uh, Stian, Stian with Noah, Stian with Abram. So you start to know what each pair can give you, but the cohesion, and uh, uh, I feel like is is in a good place. You mentioned the fitness after the Orlando match, knowing that you're going to be playing this 30 degrees and kickoff. Do you approach this week in terms of the amount of training or anything with that differently? No, honestly, the cold weather for me is, is, it doesn't affect that much. It's more, you know, a little bit uh, make sure that the warm up is appropriate and having some strides before and all that, but but other than that, you don't 
you, you have actually a bit more energy, I feel. Like when it's cold, you, you feel better, you feel fresher. Uh, but it's for me, the field, is that going to be a little bit frozen? Uh, it's going to be windy. So then if we play long balls, which side and all these things. So little factors like that, how the grass going to be. So all these little things that the cold weather is going to bring is what we need to adjust. Thanks a lot. Yes. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Not a single one, a question?